thank you today for your keeping power. Now I'm asking you to please touch this body of clay, strengthen me today. Pray that you would touch the words that flow from my lips. Give power, touch hearts, reclaim the black slider. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <clears throat> With great joy that we're here today, and <laughs> try to give God praise. Been a very interesting week. Uh, I've been, we said a little on the weather, but I actually been sick this week. Uh, <clears throat> been on liquid all week. Um, about a little weak, but I'm here strong in the spirit. <laughs> um, today's message. Um, is an interesting one. Uh, turn with us to, I'm not going to read it just yet, but turn to Ezekiel chapter 37, uh, and that's five points we're going to raise later on. I'm going to read it later. But I want to back into this text. I want to tell you where it had come about and where it's coming. It's not a Criticism, um, I'm not criticized in the day this is prophetic. I'm standing on the wall as a watchman on the wall. But for the last two years, I've gone to so many funerals. I have two this week, coming week. And it takes a toll on you. Yeah. Yes, Amen. But uh, I noticed something in the funerals that I've been going to. And recently, um, at one of the funerals, there's some things that stood out that brought some similarities uh, of the church. And actually, um, I pulled out my Bible, my electronic Bible, and started reading and outlined this, this, this sermon yeah. well. in my mind yeah. in a funeral. My God. And I came here on Tuesday 6th, Jesus. wrote a little lesson for Bible study. And back on Wednesday and Thursday, sick, yes, and prepared this little message. Yes. I want to talk about Mission Impossible. Yes. <clears throat> mission Impossible. Yes. And uh, this is a fine brimstone sermon. Right. This is what the old preachers, CC, would preach fine brimstone. I wish I could tell you the times are going to get better, but it's not. <clears throat> We're in the last days. And, and you need to run from preachers that's tiptoeing, trying to uh, tickle your ears. You need to run <clears throat> from those kinds of preachers. Let me ask a series of questions. Can the church ever be revived? Can the church ever quit fighting and arguing over stupid stuff that has no uh, eternal consequences and get back to being the body of Christ, the glory of God in the earth? Can the church ever again be the agency of the kingdom of God in the earth? Can the church strip off her worldly garments and be clothed in strength once again yeah. and put on her robes of righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. Can the church ever again be the mighty army of God yeah. <clears throat> beating down the gates of hell, hell? Right. setting the captives free, yeah. healing the sick, delivering uh, the bound and the oppressed? Yeah. Oh Lord God, you know. It seems like the mission is impossible. 
We often find ourselves stuck in impossible situations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Effects of global warming, yeah. natural calamities, wars and rumors of wars, yeah. terrorism, yeah. international and domestic, yeah. moral decadence, threatening our world. Yeah. Alarmingly, we all face uncertainties. Yeah situation that is impossible to solve, sickness that is impossible to cure, burden that is impossible to bear, problems that is impossible to muster, past that is impossible to forget, blunder that is impossible to undo, weakness that is impossible to overcome, habit that is impossible to break, relationship that is impossible to restore, hurt that is impossible to mend, amen, uh, impossible, amen, uh, situations all around. But what about an assignment that is impossible to accomplish? Being a limited human being, having much impossibility in life, Mission impossible. Our hope rests in the words of Jesus. In Matthew 19, verse 26, Jesus looked at them and said, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. God leads you to mission impossible. I'll say that again. God leads you to mission impossible so that you may see God unmistakable. In Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1, says, The hand of the Lord came upon me, brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Verse 2, then he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And indeed, they were very dry. And verse 3, and it said to me, son of man, can these bones live? And so I answered, oh, Lord God, you know. Verse 4, and he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now, it has been said that, they, that there will be no survival without revival. <clears throat> we are watching daily the appearance, I said the appearance of prosperity and success, but the political, the military, the financial, the moral, and the spiritual infrastructure of this country is growing weaker every day because the church is growing weaker. Come on, help me here. Our hope is not on Wall Street, not in the Dow Jones, is not in Washington. It's not who sits in the White House. It's not on Capitol Hill in the Senate. It's not in the State House. It's not who's in the Supreme Court. It is in God. We need a revival. Too many churches are content with the status quo, which is marked by a general deadness that is occasionally interrupted by some kind of spiritual shock treatment that produces an occasional spark of life. I, for one, am not about to be content with anything that resembles death when God is in the business of reviving the dead. In our text, Reverend, we, uh, we're going to discover how the breath of God transform a desolate graveyard into a dynamic battalion of marching soldiers. 
Now, the central message behind the count of the valley of dry bones is that God has the power to bring back life whatever is dead. I said whatever is dead. God can solve or he can turn hopeless situations around. Ezekiel 37 verse 11 say, helps us to understand just how bad and how hopeless the situation of the dry bones was. It says in the B clause of verse 11, they said, they said, they said, our bones are dry. Our hope is lost and we ourselves are cut off. So in Ezekiel 37, the revival of these bones symbolizes the restoration of Israel, of the Israelites from their captivity. It's also an emblem of the Jews' ultimate return to the land of promise. Furthermore, the text figuratively portrays God's power to enliven the church, enliven the church and to surcharge it, surcharge it with the dynamic of the Holy Ghost. Five things, five things, five things. Have a look at this text. First off, verse one, let's look at the place. Let's look at the place. Amen, or the location, the place. The text indicates that the prophet Ezekiel was transported or carried by the Lord to an ancient valley of death. Come on, help is going to get rough in here. Ezekiel's place of divine appointment was neither attractive nor promising. But, but no one ever had a more definite call. Look in verse 1 of a text. It says three things. It says the hand of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord. Both were operative in the prophet's life. And then verse 1 also say the valley was full of bones. The hand of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord. And the valley was full of bones. Did y'all see that? Ezekiel had been directed and delivered to a place of death and desolation by divine mandate. This was Ezekiel's divinely ordained preaching assignment, Mission Impossible. Now actually, and don't miss this, don't miss this for you who want to stay on easy land, walking through the park. Actually, the Lord never promised Ezekiel a life of comfort and ease. Come on here, come on. In fact, I want you to notice what God said to Ezekiel when he called him in Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 3. He said to him, son of man, I'm sending you to the children of Israel. Amen. To a rebellious nation uh, that had rebelled against me. They, don't get it mixed up, Ezekiel. They haven't rebelled against you. They, they rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me in this very day. And then in verse 4 it says, For they are impudent and stubborn children. I'm sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Mission impossible. Say amen. Sometimes the preacher will find his congregation rebellious and unreceptive. Come on, help me up in here. It's not personal. This is just a straight truth. Now, when, it, when Isaiah, amen, exalted Israel to obey God, his message was not received with gladness. Can I prove it? Isaiah chapter 48, verse 4 said, Because I knew that you were abstinent, and your neck was as iron sinew, and your bronze, your brow was bronze. Help me, somebody. And then what about Stephen? What about Stephen? Deacon Stephen. When he defended his faith before 
the high priest and the Sanhedrin, he, he encountered a defiant audience. In Acts 7, verse 51, it said, You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ear. And listen to what he went on to say, Matthew. He said, You always resist the Holy Spirit. Uh, yeah, yeah, I understand that because just like some of y'all I'm looking at right now, I'm not talking about out there, but in here, stiff neck won't come to Bible study. Stiff neck, uncircumcised and heart and ear, won't be on time. Stiff neck, always resist the Holy Spirit. Dr. Vance Havener. Yeah, I said, said this on occasion. He would preach in a church where they looked on the faces of people would cut them milk. Y'all didn't hear that. I, I said, look on the faces of the people with cut them milk. No, I, and that, that, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> I think, however, I'd rather preach in a place where there is defiance rather than a place where there is death. Y'all got kind of chilly in here. I'm telling the truth anyhow. Just say ouch. I think I would rather preach to a convention of atheists than a valley of dry bones. Despair is rational and hope is observed in a situation like the one encountered by Ezekiel. But sometimes you have a church where there are just a lot of empty pews. But sometimes you have a church where the pews are just full of a lot of empty people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that, that I just said something right there. I'll say it again. Sometimes you have a church where the pews are full, uh, just full of a lot of empty pews. But sometimes you got a pew full. The pews are empty. The people are there, but the empty people. I said I said something. In either case, they are the deadness that prevails. May God provide rather that, that kind of deadness ever uh, settle down in our church. They're trying to get in here though. But I, I, I rebuke it right now. Mm. Some of y'all brought it in. You change your address to the city of death. May God forever deliver us from being Boneyard believers, a bone graveyard believers. Far too many churches are characterized by the pitiful, repulsive spectacle of bones that have been dried and bleached by years of exposure to worldly compromise and spiritual drought. I'm going to preach this. Paul Ezekiel, assignment valley of dry bones. That was uh, the place to which God sent him to preach his message. The entire valley was blanket with lifeless bones. Dry bones. Say dry bones. Dry bones. Ezekiel said very dry. Poor Ezekiel. Poor pastor. Poor pastor. He, he stood knee deep in the midst of those brittle bones on the valley floor. Mission impossible. But I see the second thing here. The predicament here is in verse 2. When Ezekiel actually surveyed the situation, he saw all the bones and he observed they were very many in the open valley. And then he said they were very dry. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say something else here in a minute. That was a scene of silent desolation. The valley did not contain skeletons, but an indiscriminate mass of bones. So thick that the plain was white with the chronic leprosy of death. Those dry bones belonged to soldiers of God. The people that had decayed in the valley were soldiers of God. But for one reason or, or the other, they stopped being the army of God. 
They had stopped operating as soldiers of God. They were just dry bones with no life or no power. Dry bones just lying on the floor of some valley. Dry bones that were not doing anything significant for the kingdom of God. Dry, y'all might as well say man, Matthew. Dry bones that weren't playing any role, which weren't, were not making any impact whatsoever. Dry bones uh, that have stopped being relevant. Dry bones were not fulfilling their church obligation. Dry bones dropped out of the praise team. And dry bones. Help me somebody. But as we ponder the predicament, these, these bleached bones picked clean by the vultures, the buzzards, scattered about in hopeless situation. Let us think of some other characteristics of death that are noticed. Help me somebody. Over these two years of many funerals. For example, help me somebody. For a dead person, there is no purpose. Try to discover the purpose of a dead man. He's incapable of having goals, dreams, and ambitions. Y'all might as well help me here. A corpse does not establish objectives and execute plans. A corpse does not read scripture. A corpse does not testify. Cops does not sing a song. Cops does not clap his hands. Cops does not say amen. We need to remember that Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision or purpose, the people perish. Examine yourself today. Examine yourself today. Are you spiritual alive? Do you have divine purpose for your life? Do you have a heavenly vision to direct and motivate your destiny? Secondly, a dead man has no passion. There is no fire, no zeal, no appetite, no motion, no heart, no driving force in the chest cavity of a corpse. Y'all kind of dry here. A dead man is utterly insensitive to his surroundings. People looking at him, but he don't respond. The smile is plastered on his face. He moved, he is moved neither by which inspires laughter nor that which prompts grief. Well, would to God that we had the passion of Jeremiah. Where it's said in the chapter 20 of Jeremiah, but his word was in my heart. As a burning fire shut up in my bowl. Would to God we had the passion of Peter and John. In chapter 4 verse 20 where it said we cannot but speak uh, the things we've seen and heard. But you see those who are dead cannot, can never enter into the passion. This intense empathy with Christ. This passion for godliness. For the loss of the world. They cannot enjoy uh, trying to grow a church. A corpse cannot enjoy rejoice when a prodigal son returns home. A corpse cannot praise God for spiritual victories. A corpse, a corpse. I'm looking at corpses this morning. A corpse cannot weep without a depressing a soul, when a depressing soul wander away. Dead men have no passion. Those who are insensitive to spiritual realities have a whole hum attitude toward the things of God. Are given more evidence uh, of death than life. Y'all say amen back there. Unfortunately, it is evident that Many in our churches have spiritual rigor morals. There are no spiritual purpose or passion. Have I got a witness? But another trait of death is no productivity. 
people and churches that are vibrant, live, or productive. But death is the mark by sterility, stagnation, and bitterness. For the Bible says in Psalm 115, 17, the dead do not praise the Lord, nor any who go down in silence. Ecclesiastes 95, for the living know they will die, but the dead know not nothing. They have no more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Mission impossible. Some churches are, are like Psalm 115, where it said the dead do not praise the Lord. Say amen. What caught me to write this message? Help me somebody. In a funeral, the preacher was preaching his head off. Yeah, he was, he was pouring his heart out. Say amen. And the poor people loaded with preachers. Help me somebody. And I'm sitting in the floor by choice. And I looked at all the preachers, uh, and I'm not being negative. Uh, I'm just telling the truth here. And the preachers sat there dead like cops. They wouldn't move their hand. They wouldn't nod. They wouldn't even raise a hand. Say amen. They wouldn't even say amen. And the spirit was moving. And they couldn't move. Say amen. But the Bible said the dead praise not the Lord. The sanctuary was praising. But the pulpit would not say amen. And I got up out of my seat, walked to the edge of the pulpit, and I helped that preacher preach the gospel. The atmosphere of the worship service, it resembled a mortuary chill of the death. That's the way some of y'all are right here today. Then the path of the grim reaper swathe. The stench of, of the decomposition is already ascending toward the nostrils of God. Dry bones. The church has become tolerant. Uh, we've allowed the world to pressure us uh, into conformity. To come into the world in the church. The fact is whatever you tolerate, you will con eventually control you. Dry bones. The church would never, uh, would never call to tolerate sin. But to come out from among it and be separate, said the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. I read a story the other day about two preachers. Uh, and one preacher turned to the other and asked about the health of the church. And the preacher replied, obviously, the folk in my church don't love each other. Because I haven't married anybody in the last 10 years I've been the pastor. And they don't love God either because no one has come to the altar to decide for Christ in the last 10 years. And it would all say, sometime I wonder if God even loved them because he hadn't seen fit to call any of them home to heaven during the past 10 years. Otherwise, everything is going well in our church. And I thought about our church. Uh, say amen. There's no purpose, uh, no passion, no, no productivity, productivity in life. Uh, the valley of dry bones. Uh, so Ezekiel saw a picture of deadness uh, and desolation. Uh, and the test Ezekiel's faith. Uh, the Lord said, son of man, uh, can the bone live? Uh, the situation looked hopeless. Uh, same man. Uh, and just as he was ready to write uh, over the situation, uh, mission impossible. Help, help me somebody. Uh, he reminded himself that there was one thing missing. Uh, are y'all going to help me here? Uh, and that was the, the power of God. Nobody uh, wants to be part of a dead church. Uh, not even Jesus. Uh, you can tell when Jesus uh, have left the church. Uh, and you can tell uh, when the church is dead. Uh, for one thing, uh, I keep on saying it. Uh, that no purpose. Uh, 
that no compelling reason for the church to exist. People just seem to be going through the motions. So all over the world, every Sunday, dry bones, y'all catch this, dry bones, they come marching into the church and they're rattling around, making some noise, performing their duties, and then march out dry, say yeah. But he said, son of man, can the bones live? Help me somebody. And Ezekiel said, Lord God, you know, presumption would have responded, yes. Yeah. Unbelief would have replied, disconsonant, no. Confident would have responded, forever. Oh, Lord God, you know. But the genuine answer, they said, with me, it's impossible. With God, it's possible. But then I see the third thing, and that's prophecy. He said in the fourth verse, prophesy to the bones. Yeah, and all dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Say, yeah, surely God placed Ezekiel in this most unpromising situation to demonstrate the power of the preached word. Is there anybody here uh, that can just imagine uh, the reaction of Ezekiel uh, to command the dress, uh, the constituents uh, of an unkept cemetery uh, is incredible. Uh, it's an impossible mission. Uh, Lord, uh, do you really mean for me uh, to preach to the valley uh, of dry bones? Uh, but notice right here, uh, it's not only... Uh, human beings that can hear and respond to the word of God. Ezekiel told the dry bones to hear the word of the Lord. He must have looked very stupid talking to the dry bones. But the bones heard. I said the bones heard. The bones heard. The dry bones heard. Because it wasn't just speaking, mere, ordinary, inconquestable, lifeless words. But what he spoke to the bones has spirit in life. He spoke the word. And this is a powerful word. Say yeah. For you to exist and experience the power in the word. You must not only read the word and believe the word. You have to speak the word. So yeah, if those dry bones to hear the word of God, everything that's dry in your life, whether spiritual life, or your bank account, or your job, will hear the word and respond and come back to life. So yeah, what was God doing? The valley of death offers. Ezekiel's faith, huh? stretch and experience. Huh? You need stretch and experience. Huh? Say yeah. yeah. When the person of God yeah. huh? stands in the power of God, huh? yeah. God's word stretches you. Huh? But then I see a promise, huh? yeah. and I'm almost through here. Yeah. Huh? God's promise huh? to the dry bones huh? through Ezekiel. Huh? Surely, huh? surely. Yeah. I will call breath into you and you shall live. I will put shingle upon you and bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you should know that I'm God. This is God's promise of resurrection. The promise of God if he will one day gather together the Jews from the end of the earth and return to the land. But it's also a modern day promise to the church of God. Come on now. Just one day God will cleanse and restore. Say yeah. Yeah. He had the power to cleanse, yeah. to 
revive, to restore the power to his church. But finally, goodbye, y'all. I see the process, the process, the process. Say it's a process. Thank God for the process. Verse 7 and 9, a real revival is a process. Say yeah, say yeah. The Bible said they stood up and had seen a great army. A great army don't stay in their seat. They don't wallow in the foxhole. They stand up. The first indication and the transformation of revival was a noise. It's a process. Say yeah. In verse 4, 7, in Zickel said there was a noise. Say yeah. The noise was the sound of a trumpet blast. Say trumpet blast. Say yeah. It was the voice of God. Yeah. But signify the end of the age that proceeds the resurrection of the dead. Talk to me, Bible. In First Thessalonians 4.16 For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, trumpet blast, a noise, say noise, Acts 2.2 2. The coming out of spirit was signaled by sound, a sound, a noise, say yeah. I feel all right now. Y'all can go to sleep now. Set that dry like you are. But I feel all right. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And suddenly, that came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting. Listen, listen, listen. Spiritual renewal starts with a sound. Do you hear anything? Do you hear anything? That's like a sound. Do y'all hear anything? The hints of revival. Is there noise on earth that's ascending in the heaven? Is there noise in heaven that's coming down? Say yeah. And next there was a shaking. A shaking. So it's a process. It's a process. The shaking was a commotion. Say yeah. Say yeah. The rustling. The rustling. The movement. The dry bones. We're getting together. Some of y'all ain't moved yet. You ain't trembled yet. Sometime God introduced something of his mighty works by a triumph of tremble, a shaking. Verse 4, Acts 4 31. And when they pray, we need a they pray. Say, yeah. It's not just technicians and two more on Tuesday night, but they pray. The place was shaken. They say, yeah, we're similar together. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they, that four days, spoke with the word of God with boldness. The noise, the shaking, the rattling is a sound of light. I know that is for them. Anybody got life? It's a process. And then it said prophesy to the breath. Prophesy to the wind. The dry bones are now standing. They're covered. They got clothes on. Y'all want to know something? I looked at the body. In the casket, it had clothes on. I looked at the clergy. They were not in the casket. They had clothes on. They weren't saying nothing. 
the casket dealer wasn't saying nothing. Saying yeah. But it said prophesy. No state or situation is too bad or hopeless. Say yeah. The word of God is your source of hope. It's a living hope. I'm gone now. I've been here too long. A home that does not uh, disappoint me. So God didn't tell Elizabeth, God didn't tell Elijah to cry. He didn't tell him to complain, or to weep uh, about the hopeless situation. The bones were in. God told Ezekiel to speak the word. Say, yeah, your tears can change a hopeless situation. Worry about the situation won't reduce the size of the problem. Complaining and lamenting, lamenting about it can't change it. But the word of God can. So speak it. At the go to my seat, somebody shout God. Some God. At the go to my seat, my prayer for every one of us is that whatever is dead or dying in a life, Almighty God will bring back to life the God that can repair the irreparable, real repair. The irreparable in your life, the God that can reverse the reversible, will reverse the irreversible in your life. The God that can make the impossible possible, will do the humanly possible in your life. Sure, it's not over. It's not over. I'm going to my seat, show no. I prophesy. To the dry bones today, oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This word is gonna shift the atmosphere. This word is gonna shake things up. The altars of Baal in your life, altars of Baal in your home must come down. Oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I prophesy this morning if the connections, I said if the connections, I said if the connections in your life do not support, encourage, and feed, and strengthen your anointing and your destiny, you need to deliver yourself from them. Say yeah. Y'all missed it. I said if your connections don't strengthen your anointing and your destiny, you need to deliver yourself from them. I don't care if it's people, if it's family, if it's a TV show, if it's your music. You better make sure it's a divine connection. I prophesy to the wind, crowd to God for revival, crowd to God for a fresh anointing, crowd to God for a fresh fire, crowd to God for a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire, crowd to God for revival for yourself in the church, crowd to God for your children, for your grandchildren, great grandchildren, crowd to God, for your schools, and for this nation, crowd to God, the mission is not impossible, if you get in the word, crowd to God, it's not impossible, if you go to the word, find the word for me, Second Chronicles 7.14, if you go to the word and do what good the word says, 2 Chronicles 7.14, go to the word and cry out to God, say yeah, 2 Chronicles 7.14, 
is is our country read it Bible say yeah if what my people if what my people if you God's people what who are called by my name who call what by my name what by my name what by my name if you're not called him you're not his people what by my name we don't well humble themselves do what humble and pray and pray what 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 pray you got to gather and pray. What? And seek my face. Seek God's face. What? And turn. And turn. In your wicked ways. Wicked ways. Then will I hear. What? What God say? What? Then will I hear. What he say? What he say? Then will I hear. What he say? Then will I hear. Then will I hear. From heaven. And do what? I will. I will. Forgive their sin. Forgive their sin. And heal. And the, heal. Their land. At the end of the story. Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. yes. You don't yes. want to live. You don't want to live. You don't want to live, yes. live in You don't want to live in Pastor Carter Baltimore's house. Yes. I say that again. Say it, Bishop. You won't live. You don't want to live in Pastor Carl A. Baltimore Senior's house. I be preaching this every day. Every day. Amen. What's wrong? Yes, Lord. With the nation. Yes, Lord. Right. That's your heart, Bishop. And the church is getting weaker. Yes. And weaker. Yes, Lord. That's your heart. Everybody wanna know what the president is gonna do. My God. Come on, Bishop. Come on, Bishop. We need to be seeking and find what yes. God is right. doing. Say something up in here. Yes. Yes. President don't hold the world. Yes. The United States don't hold the world. Yes. God holds the world. Yes. Until we go back to the word. Yes. 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 We'll, we'll find ourselves waiting. And bones up to our knees. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Lifeless. Yes. My God. That's why I can't draw nobody. Yes. My God. Why yes. folk don't believe you witness because yes. you, you're just lifeless. Yes. Can't even smile. Some folk yes. can't smile. Yes. Folk can hear, pick up a phone a hundred miles away. They can smell you. They can see you. They can, yes. they can feel you a hundred yes. miles. You gotta know who Jesus yes, Lord. is. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You know who Jesus Thank is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You gotta know what's in this book. Yes. Yes. And if you don't know what this book say, you gotta know more than what. In fact, if you a Bible verse, you gotta be able to say more than Jesus will. Well, come on. If I ask you a Bible verse, some folks can say Jesus wept. Then ask you where is that? You can't even tell me where it is. You are in a graveyard, dead. If yes, the only Bible verse you ought to know, you ought to at least know where it is. Yes, Lord Jesus. Come on, that's yes. right. Say it again, Jesus. Yes. You don't want to live in my house. I be preaching this all week. Yes, sir. I be in the Bible all week. I'm preaching, preaching morning, noon, and night. I'm watching what's going on in the world, and I'm, and I'm saying, that's because of what folk ain't in the book. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Say it. Child index in this country is poverty. Kids dropped off 40% in poverty. Yeah. Somebody say he go on politics. No, I'm not. I'm telling the truth. Right. Because of 50 senators plus one. Voted to not extend the child, what is it? Child credit. Child credit. Jesus. My God. 40%. Yes. Yes. My God. Yes. 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 Children God. dropped back into poverty. Jesus. My God. So I wrote a thing and posted it this week. My God. Bless you, Bishop. That drastic, Jesus. 
dropping the children into poverty is not a sign of a healthy nation. That's right. That's right. Now that's book. Because the Bible tells us to take care of, of the poor, the widows, the poor, and the orphans. The poor, do something like the poor. I'm through. Lord, I pray that you took somebody's heart who heard today. That we want to be so contagious that folks see us coming and, and running back and asking, what must I do to be saved? Make us contagious to the point they can see the fire burning in us. Yes, Lord. That they can see that we yes. are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Make us so on fire that folk will know that we are his disciples, that we are yes. with Jesus. Yes. Let them see how we love one another. Yes, yes. Don't let the world guess and wonder and question our discipleship because of how nasty we are. Somebody's watching. And they ought to be watching. Lord, I thank you. Save. If this sermon touch you, send a message back to us. I press to write this sermon. I press to preach it. Yes. Yes. Bless you. The body affliction because it was burning in my spirit. It took yes. a little longer today, but it was burning in my spirit. Yes, yes. Bless him, God. Yeah. Bless him, God. Bless him, God. Bless him, God. I prophesy. Yes. Wherever y'all are. Speak to that condition. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Yes. Speak God's word to that condition. Yes, God. Don't look at it and back up off it. Speak life to the condition. Yes. Speak over it. Yes. Take a thought to over that impotent situation. Yes. You have the power. power. Yes. Say power. power. Come on, stand on your feet and say power. place in the world folk already in bed get out of bed and stand beside your bed and say I have power, power. power. Yeah. you know office some of you already working off stand up by your desk and say I have power, power. Yes, Lord. power. Thank you Lord. Yeah. the only bus going to work just hold your hand up and say I have power, I have power. the yes, power of the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ if you're in a prison watching this, just say, have the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you that I'm alive. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God bless you. Yes, Lord. Join us again on Tuesday at 7 o'clock yes, for part three of the truth. Yes. Part three of the truth. Yes. Part yes. three of the truth. God bless you.